patients admitted into the hospital, there is clear guidance for clinicians in order to be managed effectively. Within my institution at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital in London, we've adopted the big five. The big five is the important areas that need to be addressed for patients who are admitted via the emergency department. Patients will require oxygen to treat low levels of oxygen in the blood. Patients will require antivirals in order to reduce the viral load. The most commonly used antiviral currently is remdesivir. In order to treat inflammation, the patients will receive steroids and the most commonly used drugs that we use are dexamethasone and also prednisolone. We need to make sure you remain hydrated, but we don't want to give you too much fluids. And it's important that if we give you fluids, that we don't want to get the lungs wet and we do not want to keep the kidneys dry. So we need to have a careful balance. You'll also receive anticoagulation. You'll receive blood thinning treatments in order to prevent the risk or reduce the risk of developing a clot. These are important standard treatment approaches that we're using across the UK in order to improve the outcome for all our patients submitted with COVID-19. As far as treatment of hospitalised patients is concerned, the Orlean Institute of Medical Sciences has already um, put up its guidelines which are available on the AIMS website. And these are a living document which are changed regularly based on emerging evidence. We've come a long way over the, more than one year in terms of treating COVID-19 and have learned a lot by good trials which have been done in the last one year. The treatment strategy for those who come into the hospital with moderate illness in our, uh, in our protocol focuses on three important things. The first is adequate oxygenation, and you need to really make sure that the individual's oxygenation is maintained. Saturation of 94, 95 is what we advocate, either by using a nasal cannula, it could be a non rebreathing mask, or it could be a high flow nasal cannula, or uh, non-invasive ventilator. At the same time, we would also encourage conscious cloning because that also does help. Secondly, the use of steroids. Steroids play a crucial role as far as these group of patients uh, with COVID-19 is concerned and therefore all patients who get admitted uh, with moderate illness are started on steroids but I would really just say that the dose of steroids has to be mild to moderate. High dose steroids really have no place as far as treatment is concerned. The third important thing that we do is the use of anticoagulants. And here also, it's usually in a prophylactic dose to begin with. Uh, if it becomes a more severe illness, you could give a semi-therapeutic dose also as far as the treatment is concerned. Along with these three major pillars, the other things that we really do is that we would give remdesivir in these individuals who come early, some antiviral drugs. Along with that, make sure that the intake output is maintained, so good hydration. Monitor for comorbidities. Very often, an individual who is not aware that he has diabetes or his sugars may go up because of the use of steroids need to be monitored very, very closely. So regular monitoring of blood sugars is important. And we have a protocol in place, which is also on the website, of what, what one should do as far as sugar monitoring is concerned with all patients who come in with COVID-19, whether they are diabetic or not non-diabetic because of the use of steroids. Along with that, I think the important issue to remember is that in a very small number of patients who go into a more severe disease, do you require to give anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-IL-6 drugs like tocilizumab, or they would require intubation and mechanical ventilation. So the focus of treatment is usually good oxygenation, steroids, anticoagulants, and remdesivir when it's required with obviously good maintenance of an intake output, making sure that the person is well hydrated, but not overhydrated because you would want the lungs to be dry.